Hi, I'm Pastor Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me for this message today. The message today is titled, Trust Me. You know, our founding fathers recognized that God's hand was involved in the birth of our nation. So future generations would never forget our currency is inscribed with the words, In God We Trust. Now it may be on our coinage, but is it in our hearts? I think that we as a nation have drifted away from trusting God. Frankly, I don't think we as a nation trust much of anyone, including God. Remember in the 1970s, the popular catchphrase was, never trust anyone over 30. Well, I suspect that many who lived through that time still have some deep-seated trust issues. I think about it, how trusting are you? I think our national trust has seriously decreased. I mean, how much do you trust the government? And how much do you trust our voting process? It seems like we hear conflicting truths issued from Washington every other day. And scammers prey on our citizens with computer hacking and identity theft. Infomercials paint glowing pictures of products that don't always live up to their claims. And many have been built by dishonest door-to-door -door salesmen promising huge results from their product that never delivers. It seems that everyone is out to make a buck, disregarding whomever they decide to fleece. For our condition in this fallen world makes us hesitant to trust anyone, including God. And so today we're going to see that we can trust God. We can trust His will for our lives and we can trust Him instead of relying on our own understanding. As we begin this message, would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you. I thank you that you are trustworthy, that you never change. Thank you, Lord, that we can put our trust in you and that you always have our best interest at heart. Now, Father, I pray as we go into this message that you would anoint my words that you would touch hearts, that you would restore the trust of your people in you. I thank you, Lord, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Today's text is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And today I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. Here we live in confusing times, with so many conflicting voices crying out for our attention and professing to be the truth. It's easy to become confused. I mean, how do we know which voices to listen to? How do we know which voices to trust? Well, the Bible tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Our trust in Him should be 100%. We should be all in. Trusting in the Lord with all of our heart is the opposite of doubting God and His Word. Such trust is fundamental to our relationship with God, and it's based on the premise that He is trustworthy. As God's children, we can be assured that our Heavenly Father loves us and will faithfully care for us he will guide us rightly, give us grace, and keep his promises. In the most difficult times of our lives, we can commit our way to the Lord and trust him to work on our behalf. Oh, my nose itches. The latter part of verse 5 tells us not to lean on our own understanding. We like to think that we're pretty well-educated people. We have public or private education and Many of us have attended at least some college classes, and many have earned degrees. We have vast knowledge available at our fingertips through the World Wide Web, as well as community libraries filled with books at our disposal. Beyond that, we have access to a myriad of television channels, YouTube channels, and TED Talks. Finding opportunities to gain knowledge isn't much of an issue. But you know there is a difference between gaining knowledge and understanding. The Bible tells us that we're not to depend on our own understanding. 
our own understanding is limited. It's fallible and it is subject to error. It must be enlightened by God's word and led by the Holy Spirit. Rather than relying on our own judgment, we should pray for God's wisdom and God's will in all of our decisions and goals in life. As much as we think we know, God still knows it all better than we do. He is trustworthy and is the one voice that will never lead us astray. Verse 6 begins, seek him, seek his will in all you do. And this scripture tells us that we need to seek God's will. Do you do that before making a decision? I mean, sometimes we don't want to know what God thinks because it may conflict with what we want to do. I have a friend who got engaged to be married and then sought God's will. God made it abundantly clear that he was engaged to the wrong woman. So in obedience, he broke off the engagement and ended up marrying somebody else. This time, he asked God to reveal who the right woman was before popping the question. Our lives would go much smoother if we only asked the Lord what we should do first. I mean, sometimes when we seek God's will, God says, wait. We hate to wait. We want answers, and we want direction, and we want it now. A good friend's daughter was at a critical decision point in her life. She had just finished her bachelor's degree and had multiple options for her life's work. Some options, which included additional education and earning advanced degrees. She really did not want to expand her debt. She could have gotten a good paying job, but she didn't have peace about enrolling in school or peace about going back to work. She wisely took her question to the Lord, and he clearly told her, wait. I remember she wasn't excited about this direction, but she was obedient to the Lord. And after several months of living with her parents and praying about her decision, she enlisted in the military and studied to become a doctor. She now serves as a physician to soldiers in Hawaii. She's always felt a call to medical practice, but had never considered the military as an option to realizing her dream without incurring fi extra fi financial debt. God told her to wait and then opened up a path for her. It can be really hard to trust God when nothing seems to be happening, but it's harder still to live with the consequences of taking matters into our own hands. Resist the temptation to think that God has forgotten you. Have patience and courage to wait for God to act. Now the Bible records an incident of not waiting for God in Genesis 16. God had promised childless Abraham that he would become the father of many. But he and his wife were old, beyond the normal childbearing bearing age. Sarah, his wife, decided to take matters into her own hands and help God out. She had her maid sleep with Abraham to conceive a child. Ishmael was born. But years later, Sarah herself gave birth to the true child of promise, Isaac. Sarah forced Abraham to banish the servant girl and his son Ishmael, which he did. But because Ishmael was from Abraham's seed, God blessed him and build a great nation through him, as well as he did for Isaac. Ishmael produced the Arab nations, and Isaac produced the Jews. Look at the conflict in the Middle East. It makes one wonder what would have happened had Sarah just trusted God. Our meddling has consequences. And of course, when we ask Sometimes God says yes. He opens the doors for us, and it feels like he's carrying us along in his plan. We met a couple here in Florida who wanted to permanently move here for their forever home, but they were struggling with finances. They decided to look for a park model trailer in a 55-plus community that had low monthly fees. Everything they found to live in was too expensive for their budget. Finally, they prayed, Lord, show us your will, whatever you want for us, Lord. Fifteen minutes after praying that prayer of surrender, 
they received a phone call from the park management. A park model had just hit the market at a ridiculously low price. They immediately took steps to purchase it and are giddy with excitement. See, God answered their prayer quickly and better than they could have ever imagined. The last half of verse 6 tells us that God will show us which path to take. When we have an important decision to make, we sometimes feel like we can't trust anyone, not even God. But God knows what's best for you, and He knows even better than we do what we truly want. We must trust Him completely in every choice that we make. Now this doesn't mean that we omit careful thinking or belittle our God-given ability to reason, but we shouldn't trust our own ideas to the exclusion of all others. The Bible says a wise man seeks many counselors. And we should not be wise in our own eyes and should always be willing to listen and be corrected by God's word and wise counselors. Bring your decision to God in prayer. Use the Bible as your guide and follow God's leading. He will make your path straight by both guiding you and protecting you. Now to receive God's guidance, we must acknowledge God in all of our ways. This means turning every area of our life over to Him. Look at your values and priorities. What is important to you? In what areas have you not acknowledged Him? And what is His advice? Now in many areas of your life, you may acknowledge God, but it's in the areas where you attempt to restrict Him or maybe even ignore his influence that will cause you grief. Make him a vital part of everything you do, and he will guide you because you're working to accomplish his purposes. In all our plans, decisions, and activities, we should acknowledge God as Lord and his will as our supreme desire. Every day, we must live in a close, trusting relationship with God always looking to Him for direction by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. And when we do this, God promises to make our paths straight. He'll lead us to His goal for our lives and remove all obstacles and enable us to make the right choices. But trusting God often requires courage. In Exodus, we read of the Israelites trapped between the Red Sea and the approaching Egyptian army, bent on their destruction. The Israelites thought they were doomed. They knew that the Egyptian army had chariots and swords and were trained in the art of warfare. They had been slaves for 400 years and knew nothing of how to fight. They didn't, have, they didn't even have weapons to defend themselves. Now they had just witnessed God's powerful deliverance, but trust is often built on repeated experiences. Understandably, they freaked out. God, of course, performed another miracle. He parted the Red Sea, and the Bible tells us they walked across on dry land. Once the nation of Israel was on the other side, God closed the sea and drowned the pursuing army. God has preserved this example in the Bible so we can learn to trust Him the first time. By focusing on God's faithfulness in the past, we can face crisis with confidence rather than with fear and complaining. When I was a young believer, I had opportunity to learn to trust God. I hadn't been a Christian for very long and was still getting to know Him when my world was turned topsy-turvy. My husband had been transferred and we moved to a community where we didn't know anyone. I had a sudden medical issue develop and was scheduled for surgery. We had a little mini family vacation plan just prior to the surgery, but a few days before the trip, we were first on the scene of a single car accident. Apparently, the driver on the highway in front of us had fallen asleep at the wheel. Um, he had crossed the division, crossed the median, crossed our lane, and then crashed. We stopped, called for help, and my husband jumped out of the car to assist the driver who was dazed, bleeding from a head, room, head wound and trying to wander back into traffic. By the time the ambulance arrived, my husband was pretty
pretty much covered, his hands were pretty much covered with this injured man's blood. And this was at the beginning of the AIDS epidemic. When he asked the EMTs for something to clean his hands with, they told him he probably had AIDS now and should put his affairs in order. He was going to die and probably take his wife with him. I called the Center for Disease Control the next day and was told the same thing. They said if I even kissed my husband, I could contract the disease and I needed to make care arrangements for my two young children. I was a hot mess. We went on our getaways planned, but I'll tell you, every time I looked at my husband or kids, I burst into tears. I couldn't stop crying. Finally, during the night, preceding our final day at the hotel, I heard God's voice telling me, trust me. <laughs> he had to tell me three times before I finally stopped wailing and had his peace flood over me. Every time the thoughts of impending death entered my mind, I had to stop them and recall what God had said. To make a long story short, my husband was fine. The accident victim was fine and we didn't contract this disease and die. I learned to listen to God and learned what trusting Him is all about. Trust means wholeheartedly believing in God's promises. All of God's promises can be found in the Bible. God is faithful. He has a plan for our lives. He keeps His promises. Jesus taught in Matthew 10.31 that God's faithful children are of great value to their Heavenly Father. See, God values you and your personal needs. He desires your love and fellowship so much that He sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. You are never away from His presence, care, and concern. He knows your needs, trials, and sorrows. You are so important to God that He treasures your faithfulness, love, and loyalty above all earthly things. Your unwavering love faith in Christ provides proved genuine in the midst of trials and troubles is his glory and honor. Look at Romans 3, 21 through 22. Paul wrote this to the church in Rome. But now God has shown us a different way to heaven, not by being good enough or trying to keep his laws, but a new way, though not really new for the scriptures told about it long ago. Now God says he will accept and acquit us, declare us not guilty by trusting Jesus Christ to take away our sins. And we can all be saved in the same way, by coming to Christ no matter who we are or what we've done. This is wonderful news. There is a way to be declared not guilty by trusting Jesus Christ to take away our sins. Trusting means putting our confidence in Christ to forgive our sins to make us right with God and to empower us to live the way that he taught us. God's solution is available to all of us, regardless of our background or past behavior. And besides trusting God to keep his promises over our lives on earth, we can also trust God for our salvation. This is salvation from his wrath, which will be poured out on the earth and all sinners at the end of the age. Now there are some denominations that add a measure of things you need to do plus trusting Jesus. But the Bible clearly tells us that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The thief on the cross next to, next to Jesus asked Jesus to remember him when he came into his kingdom. And Jesus responded that, today you shall be with me in paradise. No complicated rules, no mountains of special works. Just a simple belief and trust in Christ. It is really that simple. See, when you ask Jesus to be your Lord, he sends the Holy Spirit to help you live a life that pleases God. You're not out there on your own trying to figure things out. His presence will never leave you or forsake you. God has your picture tattooed on the palm of his hand. So are you willing to take this important step today? Are you willing to trust Jesus for your salvation? If you are, please repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying for me. 
Please forgive my sins. Please help me live life your way. I accept your death as payment for my sins. I trust you with my today and my tomorrows. Please save me. Amen. So if you prayed this prayer for the very first time today and you meant it from your heart, please email me at CherylPickford at gmail.com. I want to welcome you into God's family and help you get started on your new walk with Jesus. Today, we've seen that we can trust God. We can trust His will for our lives and we can trust Him instead of relying on our own understanding. In closing, I'd like to recommend some verses for you to memorize to help you build your faith and trust in our amazing God. When you commit these to memory, they are always there for you to reflect back on. Remind yourself of God's great love and care for you. Okay, the first one is Philippians 4.19. I'm reading from the King James Version. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19 John 3.16 This one's in the New International Version. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 okay. Next one is Psalm 37.25 This is in the New Living Translation. Once I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. Psalm 37.25 Ah, one of my absolute favorites, Jeremiah 29, 11, the New Living Translation. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. And lastly, Deuteronomy 31, 6. Again, this is the New Living Translation. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Deuteronomy 31.6 you know, If you're enjoying these weekly messages, could you please click on the subscribe button located on the right, lower right part of the screen? and then click on the little bell-shaped box next to it. This will automatically notify you whenever a new message is released. I'm not notified who is subscribed. But this will just make it easier for you to access these messages. And as always, please feel free to share them with your family and friends as well. Thank you for joining me today. I pray that you have a wonderful week, and I pray that you will seek God's direction for your life and trust Him completely. May God bless you until we meet again.